जय हिंद डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू योर मैथमेटिक्स क्लास ना टुडे एज यू ऑल कैन सी वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द एट्थ चैप्टर ऑफ योर एन क्लास टेंथ मैथमेटिक्स बुक इंट्रोडक्शन टू ट्रिग्नोमेट्री बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द बेसिक फंडामेंटल कंसेप्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई टू स्टडी ट्रिग्नोमेट्री सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट ट्रिग्नोमेट्री it is all around us whatever you see even if you have a simple pen or a pencil or a table or even the buildings all are made by using the concepts of trigonometry in general if i want to explain the practical application suppose if you want to find out the height of a mountain say mount everest so how can it be done it's not that that i will go to the top of the mountain drop a rope from there and someone will be there at the bottom and by finding out the length of that will be able to find out the height of the mount everest no instead of that we use the concepts of trigonometry to find out the height of mount everest in the same way there are many other things where we can use the concepts of trigonometry and can make the things easier as a mathematician so let us begin with the chapter introduction to trigonometry in fact this is not only restricted to mathematics trigonometry is something which is used in all part of science also so trigonometry is basically made up of two words one is trigon and other is metry trigon is actually triangle metry is measurement so trigonometry is somewhat can be called as the measurements of a triangle so this is what trigonometry is now before moving towards the part of trigonometry we will try to understand basic terms which we are going to use in this chapter the first thing is we will talk about trigonometry that means we are going to talk about triangle and more specifically in the whole chapter we will talk about right angle triangle so whatever we study in this chapter will be related to the sides of a right angle triangle we all know that in a right angle triangle there are three sides one is named as base another is perpendicular and the third one is hypotenuse in general we consider the horizontal line as base the vertical line as perpendicular and the largest line segment or the side of the triangle as hypotenuse but if we rotate this triangle then sometimes what will happen that the base will change to perpendicular and perpendicular will change to base so now how to define that which side should be taken as base and which side should be taken as perpendicular for that we will consider this right angle triangle now for this right angle triangle if we consider this angle then there are things by which we can define that which side will be called as base which side will be called as hypotenuse which side will be called as perpendicular we all know that this side which is opposite to 90 degree this side which is opposite to 90 degree is known as hypotenuse so this side will be called as hypotenuse now if we consider the angle marked as a theta the symbol is theta which is there in the greek alphabet so then the side which is opposite to this angle will always be considered as perpendicular and the third side which remains or the side which is adjacent to this angle theta will be called as base so over here now it is fixed that side opposite to right angle is always 
hypotenuse this side opposite to the considered angle acute angle is perpendicular and the side adjacent to the angle considered other than hypotenuse is called as base now what if i rotate this triangle if we rotate this triangle in that case if we consider this angle if you rotate the triangle will make becomes like this the angle will go up so hypotenuse will remain fixed which is opposite to right angle now the angle is on the top so this side which is just opposite to that particular angle will be considered as perpendicular and the third one will be considered as the base so this is how you can fix which side to be called as a base which side to be called as perpendicular which side to be called as hypotenuse so here is the summary the side which is opposite to the 90 degree of a right angle triangle is called as hypotenuse the side which is opposite to theta that means the considered angle will be considered as perpendicular the side which is adjacent to theta will be called as base so this is how we can define the base perpendicular and hypotenuse of a right angle triangle in some book you may find that instead of base and perpendicular they simply write side opposite to angle side adjacent to the angle so that is also a way of telling the sides of a right angle triangle moving ahead now we will talk about the trigonometric ratios so as it is said that we are going to talk about ratios so ratio is definitely doesn't having any unit and also the ratio of what so here we will talk about the ratios of the sides of a right angle triangle in terms of trigonometry we have six trigonometric ratios the first one is sine next one is cosine third one is tangent and then there are three more trigonometric ratios which are reciprocal of these three so the reciprocal of a sine is cosecant reciprocal of cosine is secant and reciprocal of tangent is cotangent so these are the six trigonometric ratios till the time you study mathematics you will come across only these six trigonometric ratios there is no seventh trigonometric ratio in the mathematics you may study it in different forms but it will remain six now this sine word has actually come from the word sinus this come from the word sinus actually if we talk about arabhatiya mathematics in arabhatiya mathematics there was a word ardhjaya which later on changes to jaya later on changed to jiva jiva when changed to the persian language becomes sinus and sinus later on becomes sin and that is how this word sin has come into existence there are stories for the others also you may go and search for it this is just for your knowledge 
now yeah. for general expression we do not write their full name we write their abbreviations like sign is written as only s i n and it is pronunciated as a sign not sin so it is sign cosine in short form is written as cos tangent in short form is written as tan cosecant is written as cosec secant is written as sec and cotangent is written as cot so these are the abbreviations which we use to write these six trigonometric ratios now as it is said that they are the ratios so sine is the ratio of the perpendicular and hypotenuse if we consider this angle theta so for this angle theta this side will be the hypotenuse this will be the base and this side will be the perpendicular so sin theta is actually the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse if we consider these sides of this triangle so perpendicular is bc and hypotenuse is ab so it will be perpendicular by hypotenuse same way if we consider cos theta it is the ratio of base and hypotenuse that is b by h in this case it will be ac upon ab same way tan theta is the ratio of perpendicular by base over here in this case will be bc upon ac this will be the three basic trigonometric ratios and their values if we consider cosec as i said it is the reciprocal of this so it will becomes hypotenuse upon perpendicular or ab upon bc same way sec theta will be the reciprocal of cos that is hypotenuse by base or is equals to ab upon ac and cot theta will be the reciprocal of base tan theta that is base by perpendicular which means ac upon bc so these are the basic definitions of six trigonometric ratios now considering these six trigonometric ratios we will solve a few problems few examples from ncert before that one more thing to be taken care over here that see the tan theta is the ratio of perpendicular by base if we divide the numerator and denominator by hypotenuse we will get in the numerator perpendicular by hypotenuse in the denominator base by hypotenuse if you can see you will find out that perpendicular by hypotenuse is sin theta and base by hypotenuse is cos theta so it is cos theta so you can say that tan theta is the ratio of sin theta and cos theta and in the same way cot theta can also be written as the ratio of cos theta and sin theta so these are the things which you have to learn these are the ratios and their definitions how these are trigonometric ratios are defined on in terms of the sides of a right angle
triangle so this is how they are defined so you need to learn this that sine theta cos theta and tan theta are equals to what what and what now there is a shortcut of learning that we will discuss in the next class by today class you all have to learn this in this way now with this we will take few examples from the ncert book let us take so example number 2 from the ncert book it says if b and q are acute angles such that sin b is equals to sin q then we need to prove that angle b is equals to angle q so for this first of all we need to draw or construct two triangles one will be triangle abc of which angle b is a part and the another one will be triangle pqr of which angle q is a part of so let us take the first triangle abc where angle b is considered and the second triangle pqr where angle q is considered so now from these two triangles we will try to prove when sin b is equals to sin q then angle b is equals to angle q so first of all we will try to write the value of sin b and sin q as it says sin b is equals to sin q we know that sin theta is the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse so for triangle abc since angle b is considered so ac will be the perpendicular and ab will act as the hypotenuse same way for angle pqr angle q is considered so pr will be the perpendicular and pq will be the hypotenuse so sin b is perpendicular by hypotenuse that is ac upon ab same way if we consider triangle pqr in that case sin q will be equals to pr upon pq so this is what we will get from the two triangles and the conditions provided now if we interchange this we will get ac upon pr is equals to ab upon pq now let us suppose this is equals to k this we have simply assumed now for further solution if we try to write down the value of ac from here so we will get ac as k times pr and the value of ab will be k times pq but i mean to say if i'll write ac ac will be equals to k into pr and in the same way if i'll write ab it will be equals to k times pq now we will use pythagoras theorem in both the triangles to find out the third side of the triangle so in triangle abc if we consider side bc to be find to be calculated so bc will be equals to square root of ab square minus ac square if we replace the values of ab and ac from here so we get ab square will be equals to k square times pq square minus k square times pr square if we take out k square common it will come out and we will get that bc is equals to k times pq square minus pr square this is the value of bc in the same way 
if we calculate the side qr from the triangle pqr so qr will be equals to square root of pq square minus pr square and now if i calculate the ratio of bc and qr bc and qr which gives us k times square root of pq square minus pr square divided by square root of pq square minus pr square as you can see this and this are same so they will get cancelled out and you will get that the ratio of bc to qr is also equals to k earlier on we have obtained that these ratios are equals to k and now this is also equals to k so by combining these two we can write ac upon pr is equals to ab upon pq is equals to bc upon qr and we know that if in a triangle the ratio of all three sides are equal then by s s s similarity criteria we can write that triangle a b c is similar to triangle p q r and when the triangles are similar we know that all the corresponding angles are equal and hence angle b is equals to angle q so this is how we can use trigonometry to prove this moving ahead to the next problem we will take one more question today and the question is this in a triangle opq right angled at p op is 7 and the difference of oq and pq is 1 cm we need to find out the value of sin q and cos q so it's very clear that if you want to find out any trigonometric ratios we just need to know the sides of a right angle triangle if we know the measurement of all three sides of a right angle triangle we can obtain any value or value of any trigonometric ratio so for the same we will consider this triangle so for this triangle once again oq is the hypotenuse op is the perpendicular and pq can be called as the base so if we use pythagoras theorem for this we can write oq square is equals to op square plus pq square from here if we write oq it will be equals to 1 plus pq if i shift this to this side so if i replace this by 1 plus pq we will get 1 plus pq whole square is equals to op square plus pq square expanding it by using a plus b whole square we will get 1 plus pq square plus 2 times pq is equals to op square plus pq square since pq square is common to both the sides they will get cancel out and then we will get 1 plus 2 times pq is equals to now the value of op is given as 7 so it will be equals to 7 square we will now find out the value of pq we'll shift this one to other side so we'll get 2 times pq is equals to 49 minus 1 and that gives us pq is equals to 48 by 2 that is equals to 24 cm so we got the value of pq as 24 cm oq is 1 plus pq that is 1 plus 24 that is equals to 25 cm so after knowing all three sides of a right angle triangle it is very easy to find out the value of any trigonometric ratio 
so if I want to find out sine Q so for Q this will be the perpendicular this is base this is hypotenuse we know sine Q is perpendicular by hypotenuse means it is equals to OP by OQ so that is equals to 7 by 25 same way if I want to find out cos Q so for cos we know it is base by hypotenuse so it will be PQ upon OQ that is equals to 24 by 25 so easy one so this is how the questions can be solved for trigonometric ratios for today's class this is all we will meet with some more questions of the first exercise of the NCRT book till then do revise all these concepts if there is any doubt do ask till then happy learning Jai Hind